Hello, and welcome to Two Dancing Clams. This video, this video tutorial will cover procedurally placing a string along a curve in Blender Geometry Nodes. Placing a string along a curve in Blender Modeling Mode is trivial, but there's no easy way to handle this in Geometry Nodes. It would be easier to accomplish this if we could get a bounding box on the instances provided by String to Curves, but this does not currently work, and I don't expect it to in the near future. In this video, I'll demonstrate a simple method to align a string to a curve just using Translate and Rotate. The goal is to place the string smoothly along the curve, preserving the original spacing. There is an approach where each letter is placed using an instance on points, but I'll cover that in a separate video. It is quite a bit more complicated and somewhat limited in usefulness because it destroys the original spacing. The project file for this tutorial is available on Gumroad. Just follow the link below. To get started, let me turn on screencast keys so you can see what I'm doing. And make sure that we have Node Wrangler turned on. Edit Preferences, Node Wrangler. It is turned on. Create some geometry nodes. Starting with a circle. And this is a good time to talk about what we're trying to accomplish. So there are a couple of different methods for placing things on a curve. You can, if you have, for example, five letters, you can just divide the circle up into five pieces and then place a letter at each instance. That's not what we want to do here because the goal is to preserve the original spacing. So we, that approach won't work. What I'd like to do instead is instead of dividing the circle into like five pieces, divide it into say 500 pieces. So you get very fine gradations along that you can pick from. And so if you have a letter that's say four units wide, I can start the letter here, end the letter here, and then pick a normal and a position of any one of these to use to place a letter on. And then when we get to the next letter, maybe it's only three units wide, etc. The idea is to create enough points along the outside of the curve that we can place a letter anywhere we want to. Next one we'll need is our text. Let's go ahead and do that now. One of the things I like to do is keep up with the group inputs as I go along. So in this case, I'll create a group input that will control the font size. And that will show up over here, and we can go ahead and control that. So let's do that. That way, if I need this font size somewhere else, and I know I will need it somewhere else in the noodle chart, I can go ahead and create a duplicate of the group input and just grab the size directly rather than having to drag a noodle all the way across the map. Let's give this a decent radius and join them together. And while we're at it, go ahead and fill in the letters. Let's divide the circle up into many small pieces to give us a good selection of where we can place letters. So I'm just going to hook this up. This will create a new entry in our group input, which shows up over here. I'm going to set this to 500. This will also control in an indirect way how close the letters are to each other. So it's useful to have this exposed so you can play with it. What we're going to do is use the X coordinate of each instance to determine where along the edge of the circle we will place a letter. So like if this A starts at say, 15, we will go ahead and go to the 15th division of the circle and use the normal and the position of this point as a place to place the A. So 
in order to accomplish that, let me get a position. And grab the x-coordinate. We will add to this the number of samples around the edge of the curve. We will use modulo arithmetic to make sure we always have a number between 0 and 500. Adding 500 to this number doesn't hurt anything, and it prevents us from uh, slightly negative numbers that might happen if the string extends past 0. We will also add in a starting offset. This is useful for animation as well as just testing the code as you go along. We'll call this offset and make it an integer. We never want to go past the end of the circle, so we can do that with modulo. We want to grab a position from the circle and use that as a place to put our letters. So we can do that using a transfer attribute. We're getting, we need a vector because it's a position. And we're going to use an index. So basically, this x value along here will become an, an index along the outside of the circle which is why we divided the circle up in so many pieces. So the source is our circle. What we want is a position. And what we're going to use is the x-coordinate as an index. Now this is this gives us the place to put it, but as we already are at a place, we want to subtract the two. So let's do a vector subtract. And we will subtract our position. And we'll turn that into a and we'll turn that into a translate instances. That looks really nice. Next up, we need to rotate the instances. Now there's a little trap in here, and it goes way back over here. So this position is used as the basis to grab the x-coordinate, which gives us the index along the circle. The problem is this position is relative to wherever this chain gets hooked into. So before we do a translate instances, the geometry will come from as it is here. After we do it, the position will be the geometry as it is here, which means that we'll get a different point for each of these two actions. We don't want that. We want to get the same position along the circle for both of these actions. So easiest way to accomplish that is to do a capture attribute. And we're going to capture a vector. And we're going to capture it from an instance because that's what we have at this point. And what we want is the position. So now, when we get this position, and we do this math to extract the x-coordinate and use it as an index, it will be forever referencing the geometry as it is here rather than what it might be later on. Now let's do another transfer attribute to get the amount to rotate by. Control shift d The attribute we want is curve tangent.
We need to do just a little math to turn this XYZ into a amount we can rotate pi. And arctangent 2 does that nicely. It basically just takes this X and Y and turns it into an amount to rotate in radians, which is exactly what we want. And we only need the, we're going to rotate around the Z coordinate. And that's it. So now we've taken each of the letters as it existed in this along the X axis, and we have successfully wrapped it to the outside of the circle. One last thing I'd like to address before closing this video is, if you look, the larger letters tend to depart the curve. That's because we're using this point here to position and to rotate the letter. We can do a little bit better if we go a little bit further along the curve to pick a rotation point. So let's do that. Come over here, let's grab a copy of this. And we want to go along the circle just a little bit further, so we will add to this. And what we will add will be a portion of the font size that we picked earlier. And what I've discovered is the font size over about one third of the font size will do nicely. And if we use this as the index, you can see everything is much more nicely along the curve. And that will help a lot, especially if you decide to animate this. Now let's animate this to see it work. I can, this is the offset, starting offset, so I can change this to frame. And if the number of divisions in a circle is equal to the number of frames, then we can smoothly animate in a loop. So let's go ahead and change that number of frames real fast. And our circle divisions was 500, so let's make this 500. And default is right. Everything works just fine. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time.